What are you at boys? My name is Troy and this is Dolly 20 coming at you with another video. Today we're going to talk about going off the grid. Talk about going way the frig off the grid and running some DMD combat on a gridless system. So before we get started here, I want to say thank you to Blue Dragon Arcana. He's my newest sub. I'm going to link his profile in the bottom. He's also starting a D&D channel, so go ahead and check him out. Give him a like, give him a subscribe. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Try to get our small YouTube channels off the ground here. So today I want to talk about gridless gaming and the advantages and disadvantages of the system. We're going to talk about how to move, different types of ways to do that different tools and techniques you could use, different tricks and tips, why you should play on a system like this versus why you should play on a grid system. So we're going to start off, and the first thing you can see here is it's your turn to move, and what are you going to do? You can't count squares left or right. You're not going to eyeball it very well. So how do you move? Well, the simplest way to move is with a measuring tape. Five feet equals one square. One inch equals five feet. So if you wanted to move, it's pretty simple. If you've got a speed of, say, 30 feet, that's 6 inches, and you can simply move your character 6 inches. And the nice thing about this versus a grid is that you can move this character 6 inches in any direction in 365 degrees. Diagonals aren't that important when you're running off straight distances. There's no need to worry about things like cutting corners like on a gridded system. Now, what if we were to go around, say, a bend, or this guy needs to tuck around this tree right quick? You can simply move four inches by two inches, and you're there. Pretty simple, right? So that's the basics. Easy movement. One inch equals five feet. One of the advantages with moving with a measuring tape, you can easily just turn your player in any direction you choose. Quickly poke around corners. So now the shit hits the fan, you're in the middle of battle and you need to quickly figure out how far somebody is away. You don't have to worry about counting squares, one, two, three, four, five, you get the idea to your target. You can simply take your measuring tape and in an instant know how far you are away. 10 inches, 50 feet, you're in range, or you're not in range. Easy. If a measuring tape is too big of a pain in the ass for you, don't worry. There's a few other ways you can move. One way is using a set of measuring sticks or a ruler. The nice thing about these measuring sticks, they come pre-marked with the distances in inches. So if your speed is 30 inches, then the 6-inch ruler is perfect for you. Now these are used in a game called War Machine. And the trick to these are, when you move your player, you bring them to the end of the measuring stick. You don't take them ahead of the measuring stick, then you'll be a cheating bastard. Nobody likes a cheating bastard. But it's an easy mistake to make, so just keep that in mind. So these sticks, of course, come in different range, different sizes. So if you're a dwarf, maybe you're using a 5-inch measuring stick. Actually, let's go dwarf. Mm -hmm. Man, who the fuck put a wizard out front? There we go. So, you can keep one of these handy, and there's your basic movement and all the increments leading up to it. So if you only want it to go... Half your movement, it's like that. Simple. So I'll put a link in the description where you can pick some of these up. Personally, I prefer the measuring tape, but these are handy in a pinch. So let's just get rid of these. Now, why would you play on a gridless system? Well, there's many reasons. One of the reasons you want to play on a gridless system is because the access to different types of terrain and play mats are far greater on gridless systems. 
Of course, something like this is the Citadel Realm of Battle board available from GW. This sets up in a four foot by six foot configuration. I've just got one of the tiles here. It makes for a great mat for forest encounters. And the nice thing about these mats are the detail that you get in them. You can really bring immersion to your games. You can really get your players into it. And of course, that'll bring you into more realistic terrain, 3D pieces, different types of elevation. That way your players can interact more with your settings. They can hide behind a building, or they can duck under a barrel, or they can climb that tree. When you draw these things on a grid, and it's just two-dimensional, it's much harder to imagine these types of interactions. So in my experience, what I found when I put a 3D board on the table, my players had engaged more with their surroundings. And if any of you guys got a background in wargaming like myself with a lot of 40k and war machine, then you've got a ton of terrain like this kicking around. And what better use than Dungeons and Dragons? Okay, now let's really get into it. When the shit hits the fan and combat starts, what are you going to do without a grit? So flipping through the player's handbook, there's not a whole lot of rules about even playing on a grid. Most of them can be found on page 192 on their variant playing on a grid. It just talks about squares and speed and entering a square and corners and ranges. Counting them out on the grid system, whether or not going diagonally counts or not for double movement, things like that. Not a lot of stuff in this book. Now what about the DMG, the Dungeon Master's Guide? Well, there's not a whole hell of a lot in here either about grid combat. One of the most interesting things you're going to find here is regarding cover and line of sight and flanking and how that works with surrounding squares or hexes if you're playing on a hex grid. The interesting thing here is how cover and half cover works and they display diagrams of how many blocks need to be blocking the creature and preventing you from seeing it properly. When we're going gridless, we'll take a more realistic approach, a more wargaming approach, and see if it makes logical sense. For example, if you see an orc here hiding behind rubble, he's half covered from the waist up, we'll go ahead and give him half cover. If you see, or you can't see somebody totally tucked away in a building here, they'll go ahead and get three quarters cover, if not full cover. So the way around that is Pretty simple, it's just use logical based decisions. Now, in terms of flanking, flanking is easy as well. If we have an orc here, for example, and we have a dwarf, and let's say our warlock here, flanking works fine. And the nice thing with the gridded system that we don't have to worry about specific placements, specific squares. We could be more open and free with how we place our models. It's giving you a little bit more freedom, a little more realistic approach to the combat. So, there's a few things we need to remember here with combat. Of course, line of sight, which we just explained is pretty logical, but also elevation. The nice thing about running on a gridless system is you can easily determine and measure your elevation. You don't have to worry about judging how many inches that is. So let's say we have our trusty dwarf here, who of course is a barbarian because he's a dwarf. And what good dwarf isn't a barbarian? And he wanted to use his action to rush into this building. Four inches to here and one inch to here. And then he's going to go ahead and use his bonus action to dash and he's going to move forward another inch and then up two and a half inches. Athletic check to see if you can jump it. Mm, sure, he makes it. So now like any good barbarian he's going to go ahead and bonus action rage, reckless attack, Great Weapon Master, two twos. Well, this is how this one's going to go. So 
So, be fucked up. Now, so to clarify that, elevation is pretty simple. You just go ahead and measure your distances up, whether they're stairs or ladders or whatever they are, and then you have your distances. So you can see here, top of this building is five inches. Pretty simple. So next up is our wizard. He's going to do something nobody's ever seen before. He's going to cast Fireball. So we'll quickly do his movement. That's 25 feet or 5 inches. He's going to size up these two forks over here. And he's going to go ahead and cast a 20 foot radius Fireball. This is where our templates come in. So he can go ahead and measure range. Center the template, and as you can see, both are going to be hit. Also, pro tip, if your DM is asking for more D6, you're pretty much fucked. Let's see what we do here. 26 on dice. Deck save for our orcs. Natural 2 and a 12. So with that, this wizard done messed those two orcs up pretty good. So the point being here, that templates are your best friend. Not only in non-gridded combat, but in gridded combat as well. We come in many different types. We can have area effects, cones, cubes, straight lines, different types of effects. You can get something like this if you got a 3D printer on Thingiverse. I'll put the link in the description. So now let's talk a little bit about cover like we touched on earlier. So if we have our ranger go ahead and duck behind this cart here. And we have our orc looking across. You can see that she easily has half cover. If this was a wagon drawn on a grid surface, it'd be a little tougher to do that. Now, a simple movement like this, when you know you have less than your 6 inches or your designated movement, you can simply just move them. And the nice thing with no gridded system here, you don't have to worry about specific placement. So let's say it's our orc turn. He's going to go ahead and move. He's going to use his elevation movement for 2 inches down. That's 10 feet. He's going to jump down with an athletic check. 15. He's golden. And then he's going to go ahead and move an additional 20 feet or 4 inches there. Let's let these guys have a little payback for fun here. And say that orc is going to go ahead and throw his javelin at a range of 30 feet. So if we quickly check, we can tell instantly that it's on the long range side. So you can see something like that, how fast you can move down, over, and judge range without counting any squares. So let's just see what he does there. Natural 4, Warlock is in luck. I hope this quick example of this makeshift combat gave you an idea how to move elevation, cover, range, templates, and how you would use a gridless system to accomplish those things. And even some of these tips are great on a gridded system too with some of this 3D terrain. Uh, you know what? That dwarf needs another go at that orc. Die, you bastard, she'll die this time. 7 2 Let's talk a little pros and cons of a system like this. So the pros, of course, is your access to this immense amount of terrain that's out there. All types of stuff from many different companies. All different types of game systems. So many of them out there don't use a grid system, so you have tons to choose from. It's one of the biggest advantages. Another advantage is that it promotes realism. It gets that grid off the board and gets your mind more into your happenings. Once you figure out how to use your sticks or your measuring tape, you can really speed up combat, get measurements of ranges, distances, elevation, templates really quickly. You don't have to worry about counting the squares again. And also another big pro is homemade terrain. If you guys are making homemade boards, homemade terrain, 
you don't have to worry about trying to mark out or draw out grids on your projects. You can just go ahead and build whatever you come up with, hit the board, run it gridless, and it'll work out fine. After all, the fun of the game isn't in the nitty gritty details of how many squares is on a board and if you move them exactly precisely. The fun of the game is with your friends, with your dice, and with a few drinks. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial about running on a gridless system and I hope it's inspired you to go ahead and build some awesome terrain pieces and build some amazing encounters. And I want to hear from you guys. If you run your games on a gridless system, go ahead and drop a line in the comment. Be sure to like and subscribe. It's going to help this little channel grow. And until next time, happy gaming.